All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the SJP Files. I am your host, SJP, and this is episode six of the SJP Files. Now, yesterday, I was trying to record yesterday, and uh, I was having a little bit of audio issues, but my microphone's good this morning, so I decided to record episode six, see how much I could get done before I got to go to work. Hopefully, I can get the whole episode done. But, you know, the last couple of days have been interesting. In the NBA, we had a couple injuries. Injuries to uh, John Morant, who's going to miss about three to five weeks. Spencer Dinwiddie, who tore his ACL. So, you know, kind of hoping to see how he's probably going to miss the rest of the year. But could come back, depending on rehab, by the playoffs. Hopefully that's what happens. I would really hate to see him go out for the whole year. Now, even with him down, the Brooklyn Nets are still probably the deepest team in the Eastern Conference. But we'll get back to that later. Now, happy belated birthday to uh, Goat James. I know uh, happy birthday Goat was trending on Twitter yesterday. You know, shout out to Goat James. Probably will never listen to this episode ever. But I got to give a shout out to my guy. Now, you guys had to know that given the last episodes, given the episodes of this show, you had to know that I was going to talk about the Dallas Mavericks and the LA Clippers. You had to know I wasn't going to let this go. You had to know it. You really did. You had to know that I had to talk about these fools. And I mean, my God. The the Clippers are who we thought they were. Sorry. They're exactly who we thought they were. They're exactly who we found out in the bubble that they are. The Los Angeles Clippers have no leadership. And when you get to the playoffs without any leadership, you're not going to go far. The Clippers, I mean, God, how the hell they lost? Let me break this down for you. The Clippers lost by 51. They were down 50 at halftime, 77 to 27. How how the hell does a team with Paul George on it score? 27 points in the first half. The Clippers, if there was any doubt that I had no belief in the Clippers whatsoever, this game was a perfect microcosm of that. They're so... I, I don't really know how to, how to explain what I feel about the Los Angeles Clippers. Kawhi Leonard didn't play due to injury. And Marcus Morris still isn't on the team. But you got Paul George, Lou Williams, Pat Bev. You were probably going to lose this game anyway, but you can't lose by 51 points. Come on. I mean, I don't know how to explain how I feel about this game. Now, I didn't watch this game. I watched the highlights of this game. I didn't watch this game because I was busy that night. So this game took place. Well, this game was on Sunday. Now I was pretty busy Sunday night and I decided, hell the, and I saw the box score. I saw the final score for this game, 124 to 73. And I thought, wow. 51 point loss. I thought, you know what? What probably happened is the Dallas Mavericks probably exploded. The Clippers probably had a really bad first quarter. And then the Dallas Mavericks probably exploded in the second half because even championship teams lose by double digits in the regular season. That's just something that just happens. It just does. It's something that just happens. It happens to to the best teams in the NBA. You're going to lose games by 15, 20, sometimes even 25 points. 
Why? Because some nights you don't have it and the other guy does. Some nights you're the defending champions and it's in the middle of the season and you're bored. And you're bored and you're just trying to get and you're going through the motions and you get caught. It happens. It happens to the best of us, happens to the worst of us, happens to everybody. But that's not what happened to the Clippers. The Clippers got destroyed from start to finish. Luka Doncic only played 25 minutes in this game. And he only needed to play 20. They got destroyed. The Dallas Mavericks stomped all over them. And only four guys on the Dallas Mavericks had double-digit points. Jalen Brunson had 11. Luka had 24. Josh Richardson had 21. Tim Hardaway Jr. had 18. And they crushed them. Crushed them. My God. I've been telling you, the Clippers didn't fix their primary issue. They have no leadership. They have no true playmaking point guard. No true playmaker on this team. And I know Serge Ibaka and Luke Kennard are going, God damn, Serge like master the state in Canada and looks like, why the hell did you trade for me? I would have preferred to stay in Detroit. Send me back to Detroit. This is terrible. And I know they won against Minnesota. Still doesn't make up for the fact that you suck. Doesn't make up for it. Doesn't make up for the fact that you are terrible. This is an embarrassing loss of mythic proportions. In the shot clock era, no team has been down 50 points ever in the first half. Losing by 50, it happens. Like I said, you don't have it. You can't hit a shot and the other team is on fire. It happens. Getting blown out happens. But the Clippers didn't even fight back. They didn't even try to make it close, make it respectable. Okay, we were down by 50, but we're not going to lose by 50. That's not going to happen. You didn't hear that. This team has no leadership. And Tyron Lou can't be that leader. You need a leader on the court. You need a leader in the locker room. Tyron Lou is the leader of the coaching staff. But you need a leader on the court, and they don't have that. And without that, they're not going to win the championship. So there you go with the Clippers. There you go. I'm kind of done with them. They are irrelevant to my intentions. Completely irrelevant. So I will continue to mock them for eternity as long as I can. Because as long as people are calling them a championship contender, games like this will happen. Maybe not this bad, but games like this will happen. Now we will move on to the uh, Brooklyn Nets and the Charlotte Hornets game. Now, this game had some issues. I believe, yeah, this is the game where Spencer Dinwiddie got hurt. Uh, Spencer blew out his knee in this game. Uh, He partially tore his ACL, so he's probably going to miss the whole season, the remainder of the season. But depending on his rehab, depending on how his surgery and rehab go, he could be back for the playoffs. So, uh, no, it wasn't. Was it this game? No, I think it was the game against Minnesota that this happened. But uh, but still, no. Hopefully he gets back this season because I would very much love to see him in the playoffs with this team. As for the Charlotte Hornets, you know, Gordon Hayward had a great game. 12 for 20, 60% from the field. He scored 28 points. You know, this team is a, this is a good team. This is a good young team. With a lot of talent, you know, uh, P.J. Washington did have a great shooting game, but he had 14 and 12. You know, Terry Rozier had 19. Devontae Graham had 13. Miles Bridges had 10. LaMelo had 6, 5, and 5 off the bench. So this is is a good young team. I think LaMelo needs... 
I would like to see him play more minutes. But like I said earlier, like I said before, him playing behind Devontae Garman, Tony Rozier, I don't think he's going to stunt his growth. But he's not going to play a lot of minutes. He only played 20 minutes this game. I think you're going to want him playing around 30 minutes to really allow him to mature. But this team is trying to make the playoffs, so he's going to be coming off the bench this year. But even though I still think this is a good team, and they beat the Clippers, they beat the, sorry, the Hornets beat the Brooklyn Nets 106 to 104. Shout out to Brooklyn. Shout out to Charlotte. Now, this was a weird game for me because when I was watching the highlights, I found myself rooting a little bit for the Charlotte Hornets, even though I'm a Nets fan. Now, one of the reasons for this is simple. I'm not overly fond of the two of the Nets, two superstar players. I'm not overly fond of their personalities. I'm not overly fond of some of the things that come out of their mouth. And that has kind of prejudiced me against the Nets, which irritate me because I was a Nets fan long before either of these guys were in the NBA. And sometimes they irritate me to no extent. Now, they're gonna they're gonna have to do some, you know, media service. You know, Kevin Durant's gonna have to stop, you know, saying stupid shit on Twitter. And Kyrie's just gonna have to stop saying stupid shit, period. But I, they're still my pick to make it to the NBA Finals. Hopefully everybody stays healthy. Hopefully Spencer Dibbert really comes back healthy. Now, moving on to the Orlando Magic against the anyway, the Washington Wizards. Now, this was another triple-double game. Hold on. Where's Russ? Did Russ play this game? I don't think he did. Yeah, no, Russ did not play this game as far as I can see. Once again, didn't watch it. Watch some of the highlights, I believe. But this was a couple of ga- couple of days ago, so give me a second. But the one person I really wanted to talk about was Markel Fultz. Markel looks great this year. He looks like legitimately the best player on this team. Shot 11 for 21, hit two threes, scored 26 points. Markel Fultz, if he keeps going like this, will be the NBA's most improved player. And you're getting shades of what the 76ers saw in him to draft him number one overall. Markel looks amazing. He's great at the rim. Now, his jump shot doesn't look great, but it's a lot smoother. There's like no hitch in it anymore, but it's still not completely there to the point where he could hit like an off the dribble shot anymore, but I think that's coming. I think he just looks so much more comfortable. Him getting traded to Orlando was probably the best thing for him. Best thing for his career after what happened in Philadelphia. His injuries in Philly, coupled with the pressure of being the number one overall pick, I I think it just weighed him down. And now in Orlando, he's kind of got that freedom again. You can see he just, he just looks like he's having fun out there. Looks like there's like just no pressure on him right now. And he's just he's playing great. And I couldn't be happier for him. I think this is gonna be his season. I think he's gonna he he, he could lead this team to the playoffs right now. Him and Terrence Ross. Terrence Ross coming off the bench, dropping like twenty six this night, you know, Mark Hell and Terrence Ross. And Mark Hell's at Terrence Ross is averaging twenty one off the bench. He having 21 off the bench, you know, and Mark Hell is averaging, you know, 18 and five, 18 and six. Actually, he's just, he just looks better and better and better. Now, I know he had a bad game against OKC last night, you know, four for 16. He only had 11 points, but you now those games happen, but I think he's definitely matured. He's getting better. He just looks so much more comfortable in the NBA right now. 
and I'm happy to see it from my man. Now, Bradley Bill when, did not have a great shooting night. 10 for 29, 0 for 7 from 3. Uh, Wizards lost this game 120 to 113. It was a close game, but they still lost. Uh, next, Philly and was it Philly and Chicago? No, Philly and Cleveland. Now, Cleveland kind of started the, the season off hot. They've started the season off very, very hot. And they beat the Philadelphia 76ers 118-94. I believe this was their third straight win. Now, I thought the Cleveland Cavaliers were going to just absolutely suck this year. Looks like I was wrong because uh, Colin Sexton looks great. You know, Andre Drummond looks good. Darius Garland looks good. Kevin Love looks good. You know, Colin Sexton averaging you know, 25 points. Andre Drummond, 20 and 15. Darius Garland, 18 and 8. Now, Kevin Love's not even averaging double digit points, but he looks good this year. Looks fairly healthy. So, I'm very surprised by the Cleveland Cavaliers. I think they started 3 and 1 this year. They just, they, they look like a good team. They look like a very, very good team. The Orlando Magic are four and zero. Yeah, the Cleveland Cavaliers three and one. Who would ever thought you'd say that? Who would ever thought you would say the Cleveland Cavaliers are three and one? My God, I don't know if it'll last the whole year, but we'll see. I don't believe it will. I believe they'll go through that rough patch, but they could be the surprise team that makes the playoff in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, shout out to Cleveland. Hopefully, you know, they stay on this course and they just keep getting better and better and better. They got a lot of talent. They just haven't really been able to put it together. And to be honest, they haven't done anything without LeBron James in a very long time. So, hoping for them that, you know, this is the year that they can kind of put something together and make the playoffs. I don't think so, but hopefully they get better. Ben. Joel Embiid did not play this game. Uh, He sat out. I'm not sure to why, but he did sit out this game. Other than that, there's no real noteworthy because nobody else really played well. Well, everybody, I take that back. Everybody played well. It's just that they didn't have enough to beat the the Cleveland Cavaliers who had their full complement of guys. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks... Kind of got blown out by the New York Knicks. They lost to the Knicks by 20. Lost by 20 points to the Knicks. Julius Randle outscored Giannis Antetokounmpo 29-27. to Knicks won this game 130-110. to 110. I don't believe in the Knicks. Get, get the hell out of my face. The Knicks are 2-2 two and two right now, sitting at 7th in the Eastern Conference like the hell that's gonna last. Yeah, out of my his team is they're still terrible. This is one of those this is one of those games that just happens in the NBA where one team gets hot and the other one's just not hot. That's exactly what happened. This is one of those games I was talking about earlier where championship caliber teams lose to good or bad teams by like twenty points. This is what happens. It's nothing to worry about whatsoever. Uh, do not want to spend any time talking about the Knicks. Next, on the Sunday night slate, we had the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Boston lost by one, 108 to 107. Uh, Jason Tatum isn't exactly having a great shooting start to the NBA season. Shooting like in the 40s, in the low 40s, not the high 40s, the low 40s. But uh, you had. T.J. Warren, 17 points. DeMontis Sabonis, 19 points. He's having a good year. You know, Miles Turner, Justin Holiday, Malcolm Brogdon is looking like the best player on this team. You know, Victor Oladipo hasn't played this year. I don't know what they're going to kind of do with with Vic. Uh, I hope he gets better. I hope he feels better. I, I hope he comes back because the year that he, his first year at Indiana after the trade for Paul George, man, he blew up 
showed everybody that, you know, sometimes guys are late bloomers. You just got to keep working hard, keep going. And, you know, Andrew Wiggins could take a lesson from Victor Oladipo. Give you, some, give, you, give you some goddamn effort out there on the court. But, you know, he's Andrew Wiggins, so who the fuck cares? Next. Oh, fantastic. The Golden State Warriors beat the Chicago Bulls on a game-winning three-pointer from Lee. Good God out there. Hype. The Warriors have won two straight. They've won two straight, but doesn't matter because they're still terrible. Kelly Oubre Jr. and Andrew Wiggins still can't shoot. Still can't. They can't throw the ball into the ocean. I mean, Kelly Oubre is 3 for 16, shooting 18%, 0 for 6 for 3. Andrew Wiggins did hit two threes. You know, congratulations. He had 36 minutes, 6 for 15. He had 19 points. Yay! Steph Curry, 11 for 25. He had 36 points. Finally, you know, 5 for 15. Looks somewhat like Steph Curry, but ah, this team is bad. They're a bad team. And for a team that was used to competing for championships to look this bad this soon is just heartbreaking for them. It really is. I don't feel overly sorry for them. Because I was never a Warriors fan. So this is kind of like karma. Dropping back on the Warriors. We spent years beating up on the league. And now people are beating up on them. So karma's a bitch like that. Sorry. Now the Minnesota Timberwolves lost to the LA Lakers. Yay. Once again, happy belated birthday to go, James. Uh. Lakers blew them off the court. Now, Anthony Davis didn't play this game. This was one of those uh, scratch games for AD. But uh, LeBron James, only 26 minutes, only at 18 points. Kyle Kuzma, you know, just dropping threes, had 20 points. Uh, Marcus Saul had 12 points, eight assists. I think this game showed how important Marcus Saul is for this team how important he's going to be for this team. I think he's going to get Kyle Kuzma and LeBron James a lot of easy baskets, especially cutting, coming off screens. There, this is, this is what they brought him for. LeBron loves playing with high IQ guys, and there are very few people whose IQs are as high as his. Very few. I mean, LeBron's one of them, but he, they're going to look great together. You know, Janice Shooter finally had a good shooting game. Contavious Caldwell Pope hit some good shots. Wesley Matthews really hasn't gotten his three pointer to fall yet. And LeBron's only played 26 minutes, which is great because you do not want LeBron James playing 40 minutes a game, especially this early in the season, especially so soon after winning an NBA championship. That's why it's one of the reasons AZ didn't play. So you're going to see that load management from the Lakers pretty much all season. Uh, D'Angelo Russell. Did not have a good game. We only have four points. But uh, I also want to talk about um, Anthony Davis got hurt. I'm not exactly sure what happened. I'm trying to find the NBA's injury report to find out what happened to AD. Not, I'm saying AD. Oh, what happened to Cat? And uh, I'm not exactly sure yet. I know he got hurt. I just don't know how or when I did not watch this game. Like I said, saw the highlights of this game. So the highlights of a lot of games. But uh, I'm trying to find out what the hell happened. But anyway, Cat got hurt. Didn't play this game. And they got blown off the court. Now, this is... But no, Spencer David got hurt in the last game. Okay, this is the game where the Nets didn't play Kyrie Irving or Kevin Durant, and they lost quite spectacularly. Yeah, and they lost quite spectacularly. In a well, they didn't lose spectacularly. You know, 
Karis Levert had 28 points. He started in place of uh, he started in place of Kana Kyrie, and Tyrion Prince started in place of KD. They only lost by six. I lost by five, but Ja Morant got hurt in this game. He twisted his ankle trying to block a shot, trying to block Joe Harris's Joe Harris on a jump shot, and he rolled his ankle on uh, Joe's foot. You could see him kind of hobbling off the court, kind of hopping off the court. You know, he was in extreme pain. Looks like a sprained ankle. He's going to be out for about three to five weeks, which is bad because in the Western, with the Western Conference being as deep as it is, any of your top players missing a significant amount of time is going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you bad. And I feel really bad for the Memphis Grizzlies. This could be, if they don't play well, this could be the span of time that costs them a playoff berth this year. And you hate to see that. You really do. Now, back to the Nets. I understand, you know, Kevin Durant not playing this game. He's fresh off an Achilles injury. You want to ease him back in. But Kyrie Irving, I need to see Kyrie Irving not sitting out games, especially this early in the year. You haven't played in a while, man. In a while, you're healthy. So you need to be on the court. I need Kyrie on the court for this team. And I know they pretty much play Kyrie and Kevin Durant almost exclusively together, which is a little strange. Usually you like one of your superstars on the court at all times. But that's where we're at. I, I'm not overly fond of this. We'll see how it plays out throughout the rest of the season, but I'm not overly fond of it. Now, the Houston Rockets and the and the Denver Nuggets played. You know, Denver won 124 to 111. James Harden, another 30-point game. Christian Wood had 23. Not a lot of rebounds. Still working on that part. But DeMarcus Cousins, Eric Gordon, and, uh, and John Wall still not with the team. That sucks. But Nikola Jokic had 19 points. Jamal Murray, 21. Paul Mills had about 19. Michael Porter Jr. had 14 and 9. Michael Porter's kind of still filling out into his role. Still split minutes. You know, he only had 23 minutes in, in this game, but they blew out the... They basically blew out the Rockets, so he didn't really need to play that much. All right, next, I'm going to talk about the Portland-LA game, which I know people want to talk about, but first, a word from our sponsors, and uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now we're going to talk about the uh, Portland Trailblazers and the LA Lakers. Now, I know the Lakers did lose this game. Yeah, sucks. But it happens, you know, 115 to 107. This was a relatively close game for the whole board, for the whole game. I know, you know, LeBron James and Anthony Davis both played this game. AD was a little off from the field. He only took 14 shots, 6 for 14. LeBron James had 29 points. Uh, Dan Schroeder had 24. KCP had 14. You know, Kyle Kuzma only had 6 points. Montrez only had 9 points. So the bench reason they didn't win this game is primarily because, you know, Anthony Davis didn't really have a great game offensively and the bench didn't really show up this game, which is something that I don't believe is going to happen that often. Now I know they're two and two and people are kind of losing their minds or it's four games into the season. Ladies and gentlemen, it's four games. Teams are still finding their footing. I mean, the Sacramento Kings are three and one. Does anyone really? Sacramento Kings are three and one. The San Antonio Spurs are two and one. The Minnesota Timberwolves are two and two. Does anyone believe those three teams are honestly going to make the playoffs? Really? I know the New Orleans Pelicans are two and two. The Dallas Mavericks are one and two. The Memphis Grizzlies are one and two. The Houston Rockets are zero oh and two. Does anyone believe some of those teams won't make the playoffs? I mean, come on, it's it's the beginning of the season. People are still trying to find their footing. Teams are getting healthy. Teams are, you know, trying to figure out their rotations. That's all this is. Lakers are going to go on like a six, seven game win streak sometime in, sometime this year. And they're going to start pulling away from the rest of this conference. And good guy. And the Clippers are three and one. I mean, 
really. Clippers are three and one. Their one loss is a fifty point loss to the one and two Dallas Mavericks. Come on. Both of those teams are gonna make the playoffs. The Clippers are right now gonna have their I don't. Nah, enough about the Clippers. I said I wasn't gonna talk about them anymore. But back to the Lakers. So they lost this game, like I said, one fifteen to one oh seven. You know, the Portland Trailblazers. Excuse me. The Portland Trailblazers look like the Portland Trailblazers. They're themselves, like they've always been. They're just a little off the beaten path right now. They're they're still they're still getting healthy. You know, you know, Rodney Hood and Gordon, Gary Trent Jr. You know, still kind of you know easing their way back. And you know, Gary Trent, twenty eight points in twenty three minutes. He had a great game. Dale Miller scored 31. CJ McCollum had 20. Yusuf Nurkic had 10. You know, Robert Covington and Derek Jones Jr., neither of them had good shooting games. They had very, very bad shooting games. But Portland, Portland Trailblazers are a good team. And the Lakers lost to a good team, and their bench didn't show up this game. It's not a lot that that's going to happen. So this game doesn't worry me at all. Now, the Miami Heat got demolished by the by the Milwaukee Bucks. They crushed them in a way that I'm not overly comfortable with. Now, the Bucks hit 29 three-pointers. 29 for 51 for 56%. They hit 29 threes in this game and just kind of blew the Miami Heat off the court, 144 to 97. The Heat hit 11 for 37, 29%. I mean, the the Milwaukee Bucks hit, what, 19, 18 more threes in them? And that's the reason for this blowout. The Heat just couldn't buy a, a three-pointer, and the Nets got... And the Milwaukee Bucks got hot, and Jimmy Butler didn't play. That that's what this game was. This game does not is not indicative of how much better the Milwaukee Bucks are than the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat beat the Milwaukee Bucks in the playoffs last year. But this, so if you're a Heat fan, this is not a game where there should be. You should be screaming, "Oh my God!" This is not one of those games. Take a breath. Just one of those things that happens in a year. It just does. They lost by 47. It happens. This is one of those teams. It's one of those games your star player doesn't play, and the other team is hot from three. It's all this was. Take a beat. Take a breath. You guys will be fine. Now, the next game I want to talk about is the Orlando Magic and the Minnesota and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, the Miami Heat did win this game behind the 28 points of Nikola Vucevic. Markel Falls didn't have a great shooting night, but he still had a good game. 11 points, 10 assists. You know, he's another a double-double for him. You know, Terrence Ross gave you 14 points off the bench. Now, for the Oklahoma City Thunder, SGA had 23-7. and 23-7-7. And you know, good out for him. Isaiah Roby, 19 points, 7 rebounds. The Oklahoma City Thunder are basically just rebuilding right now. They're rebuilding behind SGA, who has shown this year that he can, I believe, that he can be a number one. I don't know if he can be a number one on a title team. That remains to be seen. But he, he's definitely shown that he's the best player and the leader of this team. They're a good team. They just needed a little help. That's all they needed, just a little bit of help. Sorry, and I just jumped out of or uh, jumped off the mic off there for you guys. My bad, my bad. Uh, after this, the next game I want to talk about is the New Orleans Pelicans, who lost one eleven to eighty six to the Phoenix Suns, who are three and one now. I this is uh, what I did expect of the Phoenix Suns. I expected them to be a good team this year. I expected them to be a very good team this year behind the leadership of Chris Paul and Devin Booker. I thought it was going to be absolutely great for them. DeAndre Ayton's definitely gotten better 
He's got 13 points, 12. Yeah, 13 points, 12 rebounds. Devin Booker didn't exactly have a great game. He only had eight points. Chris Paul only had nine and nine. But this team, just they, they just look so good offensively, defensively. They look good in the half court. This is a playoff team this year. Uh, this is a playoff team. I think the addition of Chris Paul is definitely going to put them in the top six in the Western Conference. I'm not exactly sure where they're going to finish. But, you know, Chris Paul has definitely changed this team around. And as for the Pelicans, well, you know, Zion Williamson only had 20 points and two rebounds, which is ridiculous. God damn, man. How the hell you had 20 and two? Zion Williamson has games like this where he doesn't have a lot of rebounds, and then he has games where he's like got like 15. Brandon Ingram didn't have a great offensive game. He only had one for five from three pointers. This was just a bad game for the Pelicans. I think these are two playoff teams that, you know, didn't have exactly great scoring nights. But uh, these are definitely two of the playoff teams that you're going to find in the Western Conference. Uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves lost to the LA Clippers, 124 to 101. That's all I'm going to say about that because neither of these teams piqued my interest in any noticeable fashion. And the Denver Nuggets beat the uh, Sacramento Kings. No, sorry. Sorry about that. The Sacramento Kings beat the Denver Nuggets 125 to 115. Michael Porter Jr. had 30 and 10. Nikola Jokic 26, 11, and 12. Another triple double for him. And uh, yeah, Mont- was it? Monte Morris with 24 points. E- and I do not believe, yeah. Um, what's his name? Jamal Murray. Uh, Jamal Murray did not play this game due to injury. If he did play this game, they probably win. But uh, Marcus Morris, but the uh, Sacramento Kings win behind the 24 and 9 of De'Aaron Fox, who's having a sneaky good year as he's always had. You know, 20 and 7, which is very much in line with what he does. He's an underrated player, underrated point guard in this league. So I I just hope that this year he can kind of get the respect he deserves. I know the team is they're three and one. I still don't think they're making the playoffs. I still don't think they're making the playoffs, but I think they'll be in that bubble range. That's seven to ten. Good young team. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so early and I'm really tired. But uh, where was it? Yes, Sacramento Kings. Good team, good young team. The question is, are they keeping or are they going to trade Buddy Heal? I, I've heard some rumors that Buddy's not exactly happy in Sacramento. Can Marvin Bagley stay healthy? Can he give you something that makes you think, hey, he was definitely worth the number two overall pick a couple years ago? Because... I haven't seen anything that makes me say, you know, he was def- he's definitely a cornerstone franchise guy. He definitely seems more like a role player than anything to me. De'Aaron Fox very much looks like a franchise point guard. So it's just about putting the right guys around him to see if you could swing this into a, you know, perennial playoff team. I don't think they're winning a championship anytime soon. You would have to get another superstar. You'd have to get a superstar in there. And De'Aaron Fox, although a star, is not a superstar yet. He doesn't have that cred. So we'll see. We'll we'll see how the Sacramento Kings build around build around um around uh De'Aaron Fox. Now something else I wanted to I know the NBA power rankings came out and I'm trying to find them right now. But yeah. The hell are their power rankings? Sorry, sorry. I'm I'm trying to find the power rankings and it's doing my goddamn head in and all right, uh give me a second to find the power rankings and then I will be back. All right, I'm back. Found the I found the NBA rankings from SI.com. 
Now, they ranked all 30 teams, so I'm just going to give a cursory ranking until I get to about 15. So at 30, you got the Bulls, 29, the Detroit Pistons, 28, New York Knicks, 27, Oklahoma City Thunder, 26, Memphis Grizzlies, 25, the Charlotte Hornets, you know, 24, the Washington Wizards, 23, the Golden State Warriors, 22, the Cleveland Cavaliers, 21, the Sacramento Kings, 20, San Antonio Spurs, Minnesota Timberwolves at 19, the Toronto Raptors at 18, the Orlando Magic at 17. I'm going to stop right here real quick. Now, the Orlando Magic at 17, I think is a good place for him. Good place for them. You know, they're still young. They still haven't had their major, you know, coming out party. And with the maturity of Markel Fultz, they're just going to keep rising. Now, if Markel Fultz can stay healthy and stay consistent, you know, number one overall pick, you know, a nightmare to defend. He's he's great in transition. He's great at the rim. Great change of direction. So, and his uh, his his visions continuously improving. I think he had eleven and ten his last game. So, as long as he continues to mature, they'll continue to move up the rankings. You had uh, you got sixteen is the Houston Rockets, although James Harden's. <laughs> Recent off the court activities have left a lot of people irritated, myself included. But, you know, 44 and 17 in his first game back, he's still a top five player. And there's not much more to say about him. But I'm not overly happy with the way the Houston Rockets, and well, actually, with that, with the way James Harden's doing business. So we'll leave it at that. New Orleans Pelicans at 15, and uh, Brandon Ingram still proven he's one of the best play. He's one of the best scorers in the league. Zion Williamson, you had the shackles off Zion. He's going to get better with the games he's going to play this year. Yet the Atlanta Hawks at 14, Trey Young still also proven himself to be one of the best scorers in the league today. 72 points in his first game. This new look. Atlanta Hawks roster has uh, has them at three and second in the Western Conference. I mean, second in Eastern Conference. Sorry about that. The Portland Trailblazers still a bad defensive team, but the but uh, Robert Covington and Derek Jones have you know. Actually, okay, I'm not going to try and make up for their defense. They're a great offensive team, especially a great half-court offensive team. Got a lot of guys who can score off the dribble and a lot of guys who can come off screens and such, like C.J. McCollum, Daly and Leonard, all have ridiculous range with the addition of Robert Covington. You know, Carmelo Anthony still could get it done on the offensive end, but they're just a bad defensive team. So I would probably move them down a little bit. The Phoenix Suns, I would actually move them up because they're playing amazing basketball right now. I absolutely love this team. I'm very high on them. You know, uh, uh, Monty Williams is your is going to be your coach of the year this year because they're going to win a lot of games in Phoenix. They're going to finish in the top half of the Western Conference. Uh, the Indiana Pacers, not much to say about them. Malcolm Brogdon, still a great point guard. And uh, DeMontis Sifonis is... is Continuing to, to mature himself. So I'm not, there's not much to really say about them. Uh, Dallas Mavericks at 10 uh, without a no healthy Kristaps Porzingis, and they haven't exactly played well. Well, they haven't played terrible. They just haven't won a lot of their games. I think they're one and two right now, but they're, they're, they're still a very good team. Uh, Josh Richardson upgraded at the wing. As soon as Chris House gets back and assuming he can stay healthy, they'll probably move up in these rankings as well. The Denver Nuggets, what what more is there to say about the Denver Nuggets? They're my pick to meet the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals again. That, that They are my pick. To, they're just an uh, overall good team. You've got two, you got one superstar player in Nikola Jokic. You've got 
a, a star in in Jamal Murray. I don't think he's a superstar yet, but he's a star. You've also got Michael Porter Jr. He's working his way up to star. So I'm very, very happy for them. The Utah Jazz, I would move them down. I don't think they've been playing overly well the last couple of games. Uh, I know they're two and one, but I haven't really, it's more of an eye test thing for them. I haven't really seen something that makes me say, oh, they're just, they're good. I wasn't a fan of giving Rudy Gobert that, all that money, but we'll see. Uh, the Boston Celtics at number seven. They're the Celtics. That's it. The Philadelphia 76ers at six. They've started the season at 3 1, a good start. Uh, you've got Miami Heat at number five. The Milwaukee Bucks at number four. The Clippers at number three. <laughs> uh, the Nets at number two. And the Lakers at number one. Now, the I know the Lakers are two and two, but they're still the best team in the league. They're they're still the best team in the league. I know they're two and two, and people are wow. Well, how can they be so high? The Nets are two and two, and they're the second team. And the Clippers, despite getting waxed by the Dallas Mavericks by fifty one points, they're still in the top five. The Milwaukee Bucks are four. Heat are five. 76ers, like I said, at six, and the 76ers have really, have really, you know, expanded. I wouldn't say expanded their offense. I'd say they've opened up the court. It's still a little clogged, but in the half court, especially in the half court, but they're still the, they're still a deep team in the Eastern Conference. They're still a good team. The trick is. Can you find a way? You need for you need Joel Embiid to stay healthy, and you need Ben Simmons to. I don't know what to do. These two don't like each other, and I need Joel Embiid to stay healthy, and I need Ben Simmons to to learn how to shoot. That's really the only thing you could say about the 76ers. That's that's the thing that's going to keep them from winning a championship. You've got a guy who can't stay healthy, and you have a guy who just won't. You know, just just won't grow the hell up in in Ben Simmons. I, I feel like he re- refuses to mature. I've said that before. He won't kind of. What's the word I'm looking for? He won't take the next step to becoming that true superstar MVP candidate. I don't know if he won't or he just doesn't want to. But that's his issue. That's something he's going to have to deal with on his own time. Because him not maturing is going to hurt this team and i don't want that to happen i want them to to grow to expand and i think the only real way for the 76ers to win a championship is you need ben simmons to you either need to trade ben simmons or joel Embiid because you can't win a championship with both of them playing on the same team together you just can't that's not going to happen it's just not going to work now, that's pretty much it for the last couple of days of basketball in the NBA. Now, to the NFL, you had a couple of really had a couple of questionable games in the NFL this week. I mean, let's see. Trying to find the scores. Ah, that's week 17. I want week 16. Okay, the week 16 games. Like I said, the Viking, the Saints blew out the Vikings. The Buccaneers blew out the Lions. The 49ers beat the Cardinals. Now, hold on, back to the Bucks. The problem with the Bucks is they're great against non great teams. If you got a pass rush, you can beat this team. So if they hit Washington in the first round, they could lose that game. Yeah, the Cardinals beat no, the Cardinals lost to the 49ers. Dolphins beat the Raiders. The Dolphins are looking to make the playoffs this year. They've got a good chance. 17 playoff this time around. Uh let's see. Let's go with the conference. 
So the top, because as it is right now, the playoff teams in the AFC are the Kansas City Chiefs, who locked up the one seed, Buffalo Bills, who locked pretty much locked up the two. No, they're still fighting with Pittsburgh for the two seed. Uh, you got Tennessee at number four, Miami at number five, Baltimore at number six, and Cleveland at number seven. You've got Indianapolis at number eight. So if the Browns win, they're in. So what the yeah, what the Browns need, they either need to win their game or they need Baltimore to lose. They need to win and Indianapolis to lose. So if Cleveland wins, they're in. If they lose and Indianapolis wins, they're out. So that's what's up with them. Chargers 19 to 16 to the Broncos. Jets beat the Browns. The Browns, this was a win and they're in game, and the Browns lost pretty much all their wide receivers before the game. So I can kind of understand them losing this game. The Ravens beat the Giants 27 to 13. Bengals 37 to 31 above the Texans. Bears 41 to 17. Now the Bears gave Mitchell Trubisky a contract extension. Wild. I don't really see what they see in him. The Chiefs beat the Falcons 17 14. The Steelers beat the Colts 28 24. The Panthers beat the football team 20 13. Seahawks beat the Rams 20 9. 37 17. Cowboys against the Eagles. Packers crushed the Titans 40 to 14 and the Bills demolished my beloved Patriots 38 to 9. Good God, the Patriots need to find a quarterback because Cam Newton looks shot. His arm is done. He he's, his arm is done. And it's sad to see because it was an MVP candidate the last couple of years. But that's the scores for the uh week 16 games. Now on I want to say either I'm thinking Friday or Saturday. I'm going to give a bit of a breakdown on the week 17 game slate. See who I think will win, who I think will make the playoffs. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for episode six of the SJP Files. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry about that. I got cut off. Uh, What was I saying? Now, uh, we're going to drop off with a little music as we usually do. Uh, Remember to listen to episode 7 of the SJP Files on, it's either going to drop Friday or Saturday. That's the plan. So thank you very much and have a happy holidays and a great New Year's. Good looking out. Once again, shout out to Goat James. Hope he has a lovely birthday. We're out. See you again.